Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Beth at Spiral Path Healing Arts and this is Editing Beth actually. I have my computer going behind me. I'm trying to get uh, some videos up that I've taken bits and pieces of video over the last few weeks and not um, had taken the time to put together into some kind of cohesive whole. And that's why Editing Beth is here because the one I'm working on has zero introduction. I just start talking, which I do a lot. Uh, so this is my birthday video, part one, at least, because I think there's more coming for my birthday. And I received a box from my sister and we're going to see what was in the box. Okay. Let's go see what was in the box. Okay, so these are all the things that were in the box. This little part. I won't show you these two parts, these three parts, because they'll give away what it is. This part that goes here. Oh, where did that? Oh, I had a washer here and I just lost it. It was in my hand. Where did I put it? here. This washer goes on here. And this nut. Alright, that's the first part. And I'll tighten everything down in a sec. Then, this might give it away too. Hold on, there's a... Oh, this part's around my neck. I think this part is going to have to Kind of go. I'm just gonna put that there. Okay. And then this part. Goes in here. Can you tell what it is yet? Some of you might be able to tell what it is by now. Maybe that there's something else that I can just There we go. And then that this little washer, I think, clamps down. There we go. Okay. And then this part. Can you tell yet? Oh. Goes up there. Okay, now the real giveaway part. Okay, that's gonna, oh, that works beautiful. Is this part. Let me see. Uh, Henry's helping, as you can tell. Uh, okay, so that, this is the mother of all. I thought I was the mother of all, but I am not the mother of all. And that goes, well, and then a bobbin goes on it. Goes in here. And that goes across here. Not right. All right. We'll figure that all out. So can you tell what it is? It is a spinning wheel. A Louette S10 spinning wheel. 
Now, there's a reason my sister sent me this, other than she's, well, one of the two best sisters in the world. We'll just put it that way, because since I have two of them, this is going to go up here. Ugh, I keep getting it caught on something. There we go. And here. And I'm trying to read. Okay, let me have to turn this around. Flyer's not moving, and I don't know if that's something I'm doing wrong. All right, well, I'm going to play with this a little bit and figure out how to make it work. But let me tell you a little bit about this. So why did my sister send me a spinning wheel? Well, she sent me a spinning wheel. Okay, so she is a spinner, a wonderful spinner, a fiber artist. And she had two of these wheels. And she taught me how to spin with a drop spindle a while back. And I've kind of gotten the hang of it a little bit, but I'm not very, very proficient at it. I haven't had a lot of time to practice. Spinning with a drop spindle, spinning any kind of yarn, is something that takes a lot of practice and a lot of time to learn. Well, not a lot of time. But um, it's always something that I kind of thought it was something I'd like to do. But the time and the money to invest in all the proper things just wasn't there for me. Well, I've tried to learn drop spindling. I have done a little bit, but my last couple years of my life have been a little busy and I haven't had a lot of time. Well, then last month... Uh, Shortly after I got the treadle sewing machine, Rosie, I was in a local thrift shop, flea market, and I found a spinning wheel, an antique spinning wheel. So let me take you over to the antique spinning wheel and show you that. So this is the antique spinning wheel that I found. It has a distaff. It's a double, it's a single treadle, double drive, double, what I can't remember. I, I don't know my, my words on this very well. And it works. It does everything it's supposed to do. It you can treadle it. It spins. But I have been trying to learn to spin on this thing for the last month, off and on. And I've just struggled with it. I can get it without any fiber on it. I can get it treadling nicely. Uh, I can put just a ply of yarn in it just to practice the treadling and, and adjusting and everything. And it works okay. I've oiled it. It doesn't squeak. It was very squeaky when I first got it. But I just was really struggling. And I just decided, okay, I guess it's not time for me to learn to spin with this thing. So I was kind of lamenting that I was not able to make it work. <laughs> and I was like, will you please come and visit me and see if you could make it. I mean, it works. It works as it's supposed to work. But as I said, learning to spin is not an easy, quick thing. And a lot of hand-eye coordination, like riding a bike or whatever. And then the other day, she just said, you know what? I have this other wheel, this second wheel. And... I don't use it very much. I'm just going to mail it to you for your birthday. And I was completely thrown for a loop. I, I, I can't even express how grateful and amazed that she would just do that. Um, not that it's out of character for her at all, but it's out of character for me to, um, I don't know, it just... 
it, it left me quite speechless and I'm still pretty speechless about it. Um, it's not like people haven't been generous to me or that I have been wanting for things. Um, when I was married, uh, it, I was able to pretty much purchase things if I really needed them or really wanted them or was in the place where I could save up my money and, and buy what I wanted or work, all the things. And my ex-husband was very generous uh, with gifts. But just to have someone see that they had something that they didn't weren't using, really didn't need at the moment, and knew it could really bring joy to someone else, and to just almost impulsively do that was, sh I don't know, shocking isn't really the word, but it was just, brought my heart a lot of joy, brought me, I felt seen, I felt appreciated, um, not that I've done much for her, but she's watched what I've gone through over the last two years, and my struggles and my triumphs and how hard I've worked and just kind of wanted to acknowledge that for me. And I, I'm crying again because um, it just meant a lot to me that that's what she did. Oh, and I'm also very red and hot and sweaty because it is 80 degrees here in Alabama. It went from sitting under my electric blanket every day because I was freezing to uh, it being hot and I am not turning my air conditioning on in February. I'm just not, it's not happening. Um, but it's warm in here. Let's just put it that way. So I have a, not just one, but two spinning wheels now. One, of, of course, I haven't mastered. And hopefully this one won't take me too long to learn how to use. Um, I know the basics. I know, you know, how it's supposed to work. And this one is a nice beginner's wheel. And because she has the exact same wheel, we can zoom together and she can guide me on how to work it and make it work and learn how to use it. So I'm just really thrilled. And now I have a treadle sewing machine that works like a charm. I'll, I'll share a little bit of her in, the app, in action here with you. And I have at least one, if not two, spinning wheels and a drop spindle that um, all my crafty needs can be met even if I have no power, <laughs> no electricity, or I just don't want to use electricity. And I'm just really excited. I'm just really excited. I don't know what I'm going, how much spinning I'm going to do. Um, it's 80 degrees in February <laughs> where I live. So wool sweaters and alpaca sweaters, I wear them for about six weeks out of the year. But um, maybe someday I'll get real good and I can spin cotton or I can spin flax. I would love to... I like I love to work with linen. Linen is one of my favorite fibers. So maybe eventually I can learn to spin some linen with something here, one of these wheels, and uh, knit my own linen garments. I know it's a slippery slope. Other fiber artists are, that may be watching this channel will be like, "Oh yeah, now you got a spinning wheel, and you already sew, you already knit, you already crochet. You know you're going to get a." a loom right and i almost bought a loom during covid shutdowns because a little store near me was going out of business and they had some tabletop looms um and i almost bought one on their clearance but i was like no that's just more fiber more supplies and things that and another thing to learn and i i just decided it wasn't for me but watch because she spins but she mostly is a now has taken the deep dive into weaving. And it's one, it's a great way to use up all your extra fiber, which I do have a lot of that. Uh, I don't know. I'm ready for the apocalypse now. That's all I know. I can continue to sew and I can make my own cloth now. Uh, or at least I'm one step closer to it. So anyway, I'm excited to share this little journey with you. Um, I joke that I moved into a 19th century house and now my goal is just to become a 19th century woman. I'm going to um, start wearing corsets and make, well, I used to always make my own clothes anyway, but spin and 
sew on it. Well, my machine is a 20th century mach machine, but it is a treadle machine. I don't know. Who knows? I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to have this. You have no idea how much this means to me. So I'm going to see if I can make it work. Well, happy Sunday to you all. I've just uh, been puttering around here in the sewing room and the craft room a little bit this morning. I decided this morning when I got up that today was going to be a no DIY day as far as DIY home repairs. It was going to be a creative day. It was going to be a learning day. And I wish you could see Lilith here. Oh, hi, baby girl. Hi, kitten. Here, I gotta show you. She's too cute not to share. She's pretty and cute. Yes. Hi, baby girl. Yeah. This little sitting area 
in the front room has become a favorite. It's been a favorite of Lilith's almost since the day we moved in because she has a almost, well, definitely a 180 degree view of the front and side yards and the trees and the birds at the bird feeders and things. And the light is perfect. I had to close a couple blinds just to um, not have glare, but it's a great place to sit and um, make art and read a book. It's not the most comfortable place. You know, there's no place to really, it looks like I can lean my back against this wall, but that this wall is actually like out this way and not, and my seat ends over here. Like it's not, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Basically they're at a 45 degree angle, the, the end of the seat and the wall. So I can't lean back against this wall, although it looks like I could, could, it's not how it's, it's not how the angles work. Uh, but anyhow, that was my decision today was to just get up and get in here. And I've been working with my spinning wheels. I think it arrived, did it arrive Thursday? I believe it arrived Thursday. I spun some stuff on Thursday, uh, just with some pencil roving that came, that my sister sent with it. Just the whole lot of pencil roving, like six, it was very bulky, but it got me going. And then I broke that off and I, then I made this yarn next with the pencil rubbing. I just uh, washed and thwacked it, soaked and thwacked it, uh, and hung it. So it's still kind of wet. And I don't, I don't, and it, as you can see, I have a problem, a, a, a kitten with overspinning. So it's spinning back on itself. It's kind of a mess. We'll see what it does when it dries. Um, that is plied. I plied that this morning and then processed it or whatever you'd call it. So I've just been, been playing a little bit and learning and uh, experimenting with some of the different fibers that she sent me. I have a long way to go. So if you watch my spinning portion of this and you're a spinner and you know better how to draft or you, you know, whatever, you can at me if you have constructive criticism or constructive uh, information to share, like you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong and you do it in a nice sweet way. But if you're like, you're no spinner, you suck. That's slubby and that's thick and thin. And I'm like, I know, cause I'm just learning and I'm learning with moderate quality goods. Um, I think it's one of the main reasons my sister sent me this wheel uh, because she, both she and I, well, she way more than I, she has been I'm going to put that in past tense just for you, Pam, a teacher uh, of all kinds of hand skills, uh, art and weaving and spinning and sewing and knitting and crochet and felting and you name it. Um, and she has a gift for teaching. I don't. I don't have a gift for teaching. And, but over the years... I have attempted to teach people to sew. And I've had a lot of people come to me um, to learn to sew. And I used to be pretty good at teaching people how to use their numerous sewing machines. That was some teaching that I was able to do. She teaches kids. I can't teach kids. Um, anyhow, we had a conversation shortly after I got the other wheel, the antique wheel. But I'm like, well, now I understand the frustration that so many of my sew sewing students would have when they would come to me and say, I got this cheap machine at Walmart or Kmart or Costco. Well, Costco actually, sometimes you can get some good machines at Costco. So I won't shit on them too much, but you know, this just cheap plastic starter machine with plastic bobbins, drop-in bobbins, and this plastic gears, all the things and dull needles and and they were so frustrated because they, you know, would learn the me mechanics of sewing and the machine just couldn't keep up with what they were trying to do. Or they were just getting so frustrated because things weren't turning out the way they wanted them to. It was harder than it needed to be. So, so that's how I feel with this machine. Like I, or, or they would buy a machine at a estate sale or a garage sale, which is a great way to get the machines. But if you're not familiar with them or they're not in good repair, it can be very frustrating. So anyhow, that's how I was feeling with my other wheel.
that I'm like, I know if I knew what I was doing, I could probably make this work, but it's not a beginner person wheel. So she felt my frustration. She had been there with students with crappy mat materials or crappy uh, tools in the past. Um, you cannot precisely cut out a piece, a garment uh, or a quilt piece, quilt squares for that matter, without the proper cutting tools. You need good sharp scissors. Uh, you try to use paper scissors, you're just gonna have a mess when you're done. Anyhow, I can go on and on and on and on about that kind of stuff, which I probably already have. Anyhow, today was is just is just going to be a um, sit in my studio and use some of the materials that I have um, that I've accumulated over the years, or that I just haven't had time to do. And uh, so I've spent a few about an hour or so spinning. I now have two bobbins full. I'll show you here. Oops. My, sorry about that. So these are just, they were two um, things of wool roving in natural shades. So now I have, and this was the second one I did. I think I did a little bit better on this one than I did on this one as far as the drafting and spinning, but they're still thick and thins and overspuns and things. But now that my bobbins are full and I don't feel like plying this, I'm gonna let it sit. Um, I'm going to go on and do something else. I still haven't made any actual projects with my treadle sewing machine yet, but she sews like a dream. And I did just finally get some more, uh, bobbins for her so I can load up some more bobbins in different colors. doesn't really matter. Whatever I use her for, it's going to be straight stitching, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I bought something in a garment the other day that I kind of want to copy to make more of because I have the fabric for. I have some sewing patterns that I would love to see if I have fabric to go with them and cut them out, but my printer isn't working, right? It's printing beautifully if I can get the paper to feed one sheet at a time and not 20 sheets at a time and then jam up. So if anybody has an Echo Tank uh, Epson printer and has had this problem and has been able to fix it, please let me know what you did. Uh, cause Google is not helping. Epson has not helped. And it's very frustrating because that printer is about a year old. It's still on its first tank of ink and it works beautifully. It connects to my internet beautifully, connects to my computer, my phone beautifully. It just doesn't feed the paper right. So when you have a 47 page sewing pattern to print out and every third page it jams up, it's kind of frustrating. And the thing was, is that it's worked fine since I've moved here. It's just been the last few months that all of a sudden it just started not working. And it stopped work feeding right before I moved it into this room. So it wasn't something that happened during a move. It's just frustrating. Anyhow, let's see what else I'm going to do today.
Okay, thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it and um, <clears throat> didn't mind all the costume changes because it was a compilation of about a week's worth of random things that I put together here in my sewing room. And well, it's not just a sewing room, obviously. Uh, and those of you who are into middle-aged legs and feet, this one was for you, I guess. Uh, usually we charge for that, right? Anyhow. It's been fun. I'm still learning and still playing, uh, but I'll show you a box of stuff that I ordered for myself. Remember when I said earlier in the video that I one of the reasons I didn't get into spinning years ago was because I didn't need more stuff? Well, I got more stuff. I have this bag of Merino. I have this bag of a Welsh fleece and my Lewin top, L-L-E-Y-N, someone who knows to speak Welsh better than I do, please help me out there. A dyed merino, very pretty. This is, I think, called spearmint. And then this one, this is my When I Get Good. It's a Malabrigo dyed, and I started unbraiding it because I wanted to play with it the other day but it's a New Bay by Malabrigo. Look at that colorway. That is me all over, but I started kind of un pulling it out just to, to touch it. I just needed to pet this. <gasps> so when I get better at spinning, this is my goal. This is my goal yarn, goal fiber, is to practice on these other bags and uh, get better because I've just been watching what I was doing as I'm editing, I can I can see what I'm doing wrong. So hopefully I will be able to study my own mistakes and get better. I have to be able to get better, right? Anyhow, so uh, this is my goal. Uh, this is just some random acrylic that actually came with that old spinning wheel. And I'm gonna have fun playing <sighs> and hopefully get caught up on these videos and give you some new content to watch because I'm still editing videos from the end of February and the beginning of March and it's mid-March now. So we're almost at St. Patrick's Day this in a couple days and my birthday, my real birthday. This was all a birthday gift, but my real actual birthday is coming up and I, I bought myself something. So please like and subscribe, comment below, all those things. Um, and see what else I got myself for my birthday. Uh, it might be Easter before I actually get the birthday video up because I'm having some, also some special guests here in Selma for my birthday. And uh, I don't know if they'll want to be on video or not. I'll have to see. So if they do, you'll get to see who my special guests are and some other things. But again, thanks for watching. And um, thanks for a lot of new viewers. Uh, a lot of new subscribers. I, I'm, that's just, I, I don't feel like I've been really putting the effort in and yet people are subscribing. So thank you for that. Um, maybe just having faith in me or just want to see what kind of train wreck I get into next. And also uh, a lot of new commenters, some very sweet, nice comments from people um, on some old videos and on some of my newer videos. So I really, really always appreciate that. 
And uh, I just kind of feel like I'm building a little community here and it, it makes me happy. So anyhow, talk to you later.